sunny and 68. That's the statistical data for what the weather should be like. On December 2nd, 2023 in Tallahassee, Florida, the relevance you might ask, well, that's where the SWAC championship game will be this year after Florida A&M won the home field advantage and the right to host this past weekend. Who will they play? Well, it's a little clearer, but still a little foggy at the same time. We'll shoot the clear things up a bit right now on Pepsi SWAC Game Day. Brought to you by Pepsi, official partner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference, GM, proud sponsor of the SWAC, Home Depot, proud sponsor of the SWAC, Academy Sports and Outdoors, official sporting goods and outdoor retailer of the SWAC and Nike. All right, let's run it back turbo and see how we got here. Bam, you needed one more victory to secure the best record in the SWAC. And the Rattlers came out quickly against Alabama A&M. Let's check out this week's highlights, and we'll start right there. Jeremy Musa started the game with a 49-yard touchdown to Marcus Riley, and FAMU was showing they could get it done anytime, any place. Well, Bill Gold had the Rattlers up 10-0, and then it was a quick punt return by Lovey Jenkins for a 17-0 lead. Alabama A&M responded with three unanswered scores for a 21-17 lead in the second quarter, but FAMU came back four unanswered. The final score, not as close as it was for a while. FAMU wins at 42-28. Alcorn State hosted Southern University last weekend. Ed State was first place outright in the SWAC West. You didn't have to tell Alcorn twice. Field goal. 35-yard touchdown pass. Fumble recovery. Return for a touchdown. Running touchdown. A 52-yard connection between Aaron Allen and Tavarius Griffin. Just about everything on the plate there. The Alcorn State faithful, eh, I would say they were pretty happy. It was 34-14 Alcorn State by halftime. We've seen some big comebacks before. This wouldn't be one of those. Alcorn State wins at 44-21. Jackson State has settled on Jacobian Morgan as his starting quarterback, and things were looking solid against Texas Southern. At halftime, he was responsible for three touchdowns, and Jackson State was up 21-7 at the break. It was a tale of two halves and two Tigers. Texas Southern did all of the scoring in the second half. Its second touchdown of the half, a 20-yard score with just three seconds remaining on the clock. Down 21-19. Of course, you got to go for two points. Oh, good defense there. The onside kick, ah, that's a no-go as well. Texas Southern tries everything within its power, but Jackson State holds on. 21-19 winners. Prairie View A&M still with an outside shot at the SWAC West Divisional title, and they certainly played like it homecoming on Saturday versus UAPB. Trazon Conley with a rushing touchdown and a passing touchdown in the first quarter. A 52-yard pick six by Juwan Lewis in the second quarter had the Panthers up 24-0 at the break. Final score in this one, 38-14. Prairie View A&M. Fort City Classic, Alabama State and Grambling in Mobile. It was the Keyshawn Johnson show in the first half. Johnson with touchdown catches from Damon Stewart in the first and second quarters. Scoreless third quarter, Alabama State with a field goal to begin the fourth, and Gremlin State had enough for one scoring drive in this game, but could not solve the Alabama State defense. Hornets, 17-6 winners. Looking back at Thursday night, Bethune-Cookman comes away with the win over Mississippi Valley State. Tink Boyd was putting on a show in the first half. He was on the receiving end of a couple of touchdown passes from two different players in Valley. Puts together one solid scoring drive, but not enough. And Bethune wins at 20-7 on Thursday night. Okay, guys, so let's hear now from 12 of the best coaches in FCS football. It's a two-week sprint now, different strokes. For different folks as the prize and motivation differs from team to team. Let's start with some Friday night football. Grambling makes the trip to Arkansas Pine Bluff for a big game on ESPNU. Started that process immediately and we'll do it every day until the season's over. So we understand UAPB is in our on our side and so is Southern. So we got two really big, big games coming up and we want to do everything we can to win both of them. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, Grambling, they got a a really good offense. The quarterbacks are good. Uh, the, the running backs are good. They got two good receivers. And it's what you see is, like, like Coach, uh, 
you said, man, they're kind of like they're inconsistent. They're up and down. Uh, mm-hmm. But they're a really good football team, and, and they're one of the top two or three teams on our side. Even though the record doesn't show, they're a good football team. They can win on any Saturday. Alabama a and wants to finish north of 500, but Thune Cookman still trying to get some foundational pieces of the puzzle in order. This Saturday, they face off on HBCU Go. Well, we got to stop the run. We got to stop the run. They play two quarterbacks, and uh, so we got to be prepared for both. Uh, they don't do a whole lot different when they play those guys, but uh, one is just a lot more athletic and both of them up. Uh, so we we got to stop the run, try to make it one-dimensional as always, and uh, and we got a chance that we can do that. Well, I tell you what, it's all going to come down to alignment and assignment. Uh, you know, Coach uh, Maynard, he does a, a really good job of uh, using those uh, the two quarterbacks that he has by committee. I mean, those guys are a really good football team, and, and we just have to make sure our technique and fundamentals are always uh, – up to par because playing against a team like this, I mean, they can really expose you if it's not. Prairie View and Southern, some serious SWAC West implications remain on the table here. Both teams need to win and hope for a little bit of help, but the only thing that they can control is what happened on Saturday in Baton Rouge. I mean, yeah, they, they're, they're, they're a great team, man. You know, Coach Miller going to have those guys ready to go defensively. You know, Coach Dooley going to have them going offensively. You know, it's a, it's a matchup, you know, uh, between two teams, again, that that know each other really well. Uh, you know, Coach Miller, you know, he had them three down out front, and, you know, he, he bringing them. He going to bring – he going to put guys in your face, you know, you know, match them up man to man, see if you can beat my guy, you know. Bottom line, you know, and we're we gonna have to win those battles. Um, you know, I, I remember going back to last year, they, you know, the game, uh, post game at halftime, and then shoot, came out second half. You know, he, he put those guys in our wide receiver faces, man, and you know, and they did their thing. So again, as I told guys, you know, we got to win the battle, whether it be you know on the on the edge or uh, up there on the front line, you know, and we got we got to win it, you know, consistently. You know, I, I think that's what makes this game so exciting. You know, a lot of guys within our conference at some point may have played against one another or may have played uh, with one another. So now when you get the opportunity to compete at a high level, you know, it makes it so exciting. That's what you love about going to HBCU, that 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 feel you're going to get of the guys that you see. You know, you see those guys going out there doing the, doing the game and, and it seems like it's going to be a, a big old catastrophe after it's all over with. But at the end of the day, when those guys finish warring for 60 minutes, they're shaking hands because they know one another. They're brothers that live in the same neighborhood, come from the same area. But uh, uh, being familiar with a lot of guys, I, I know uh, you, you got to settle, you got to settle that uh, adrenaline down <laughs> because that first three minutes is going to be uh, wide open. Alabama State won't win the SWAC East, but they are a team that's on a roll. They won four straight, currently two games above 500. Mississippi Valley State has just one win on the season. Getting another would be twice as nice. Uh, we were in a similar situation last year, and we were 6-3, and three and we lost the last two games. So now we have to finish strong, and so we have to win each day. So we don't really talk about how many games we have left. We don't talk about anything except win each day. So uh, we won one Sunday, and so we want to win Monday academically, then we got to come out and win Tuesday. So... I think getting to that approach, just winning each day, and I think we'll be okay. You start talking more than one day with, with Generation Z, you kind of get yourself in trouble. So that's that's how we kind of simplified it, and it seems to work from that standpoint. So we won't change that. Um, I think to answer your question, overall, as a, as a program, I think we're moving in the right direction. Um, but we still have a long way to go to be a good, consistent team that can, you know, win ball games on a consistent basis. But you have to go through these moments, and you have to – be able to point at moments like this and you grow from it. And um, I, I think that's the biggest thing. You got to go through it. Like there's no skipping a step when it comes to uh, building a championship, a winning program. Um, and there's no greater teacher than just experience. So uh, we've had a lot of moments um, where we falter and we've been able to use those moments that's going to help us moving forward. Bam, you out of conference hosting Lincoln of California. Rattlers just need to keep those fangs sharp. You know, every week my pregame message to the to the, the team really doesn't change. Uh, we try to get creative in how we spin the message, but but the the, the mandate is still the same. Uh, and defensively, it's real simple: stop the run. You know, stop the run, uh, and I tell them make them snap it again, which means eliminate big plays. And so to stop the run, it obviously starts with D line play. You know, defensive line uh, being disruptive. You know, getting penetration, uh, and then it, it means our, our linebackers and safeties. 
uh, and Nichols, you know, being involved in the run fit, you know, so to be a good run stopping defense, you got to be gap sound and, and, and play responsibly. And our guys have done a really good job of that. But uh, but it starts with our mentality. We want to make sure that we can make you one dimensional. You know, we've given up some passing yards over the last few weeks, but if that's all we're giving up, we're going to be pretty good. And we have Sunday football. A little date change in Houston. Forget the Texans, man. Come check out the Tigers. Can TSU throw some serious shade on Alcorn State's championship drive? Or will the Braves march out of Houston with their sixth straight win? These guys, they, 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 they've been there before. Um, uh, they, they know what it takes to win. And I think, you know, having that first loss in the conference really put them on a pedestal, you know, that, you know, they can be beat. And they understand that now. So uh, I think the biggest thing is now that um, – they playing better each and every week now, and this is the time to peak late on in the season, man. And you play your best football at the end. Uh, you got to play the game, Doc. It doesn't matter if it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You got to play the I like game. That. game. I think uh, I think the schedule works out for us uh, with the uh, um, election day uh, NCAA stoppage of all activities on Tuesday uh, for the election. So it kind of you know helps us out schedule wise. Here is the context that binds all of this conversation together. The SWAC standings. Take a real good look at what's happening in the West because the East already decided, but there are still some teams looking to have a winning and successful season out there. Jackson State, one of those. Alabama State and Alabama A&M as well. Out West, all right, I'm going to need you to pull out your calculators, your Abacus. I mean, we really need to break this thing down, right? Alcorn State controls this on destiny when they're going to the SWAC championship game. They don't need any help should they lose their next two games. Well, that puts them at five and three in the conference. Both Southern and Prairie View could hypothetically finish with a better record if they went out. If Prairie View wins out the last two weeks and Alcorn State splits its last two games, then Prairie View won that head-to-head -head matchup against Alcorn State earlier this year. And there's also a scenario in which Alcorn State, Southern, Prairie View, and Grambling could all finish the season five and three in the SWAC. And that just makes my head hurt a whole lot thinking about that. But it does sound like a lot of fun. <laughs> so FAMU is going to play somebody from the West. We just don't know who yet. And they're going to play it in Tallahassee. All right, let's bring in Charles Bishop now. Uh, Charles, can you make any sense of this football spaghetti uh, that we have out there in the West? I would love to make sense of it, Tali, but uh, as you well know, uh, the Swag West is very wacky. Uh, we could have a complete scenario uh, just like last year where you had teams like Mississippi Valley State and Alabama A&M that were playing spoilers in 2022. We'll see if Texas Southern uh, can be a spoiler much in that same vein this year. Well, I th you know, I think uh, Coach McNair from Alcorn summed it up best, Chuck, uh, a couple of weeks ago. He said, look, man, it's like a one-week playoff every week moving forward. It very much is, and you're talking about uh, one of the hottest teams in the swag right now with regards to Alcorn coming out to Houston to take on a game Texas Southern football team, a team that has not given up on the season. Uh, they still have a lot to play for with regards to finishing up the season strong for Coach McKinney, and they have one of the best running backs in the swag in Ladarius Owens. It's going to be a tough game. Okay, Chuck, uh, I'm going to give you just one ticket here. We're going to have a little hypothetical fun. Are you going to go see with this one ticket if Alcorn can make it one step closer in the Texas Southern game, or do you feel the heightened drama in Prairie View when they take on Southern on the road in Baton Rouge, uh, that elimination <laughs> chamber type matchup? Which one are you going to? That's a tough one, Tali, uh, but uh, I will be calling a Prairie View Southern, so obviously I'm going to pay attention to that one uh, when you take a look at it. Prairie View going on the road, always tough to take on uh, the Southern uh, uh, football team, but uh, a Southern football team has been a bit, in a bit of a downward spiral, especially over the past four weeks. Uh, one of the more penalized teams in the SWAC, and then this past weekend against Alcorn, very tough loss on the road, but uh, it's going to be uh, still both teams with something to play for with regards to Prairie View and Southern, so a, a lot still on the line going forward, Tyler. You know, I was trying to play in the hypothetical realm, and you just took it right back to reality. and just, you know, <laughs> had to bring your little job into it, and where you got to be, but it, it's all right, Chuck. I, I know how you do me, man, here on the show. All right, uh, Charles, some fans have their eyes on next year already. Uh, we got Alabama State. They put together a solid back half of the season. The pieces there really seem to be falling in place for something special. Um, if they can stay the course, you know, 
not everybody's in it for a swag championship, Chuck, but uh, a lot of teams are like, man, let's let's really do this so next year we can be one of those teams that uh, Charles will pick at, at swag media. Then. Yeah, very much so. Alabama State, uh, they've been building momentum all this back half of the SWAC season. You take a look at their defense. They are the number one defense in the SWAC, only surrendering 16 and a half points per game. When you got guys like Colton Bubba Adams roaming around, making plays, one of the top tackles in the SWAC. And then on the offensive side of the ball, Tyler, the SWAC version of Megatron and Keyshawn Johnson, he is a gamer, a guy who can go up and he can ruin defensive game plans. All right, we have football this weekend, Charles, on Friday. Saturday and Sunday. Now, Chuck, I want you to rate these days, these three days in order, and I want you to base the way you rate them on which day has the best football vibes. Now, you can bring in your high school memories, college, your your NFL emotional ties. It's all fair play here. Let's rank them in order. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, best football vibes. Oh, this is tough. Uh, I mean, if you're in the state of Texas, Friday Night Lights is a real thing where you're going to get fifteen to 20,000 people at some playoff game over the next few weeks. Always love a good college Saturday uh, game. Uh, Sunday, God, the NFL, the passion of the NFL. I'll go in this manner, depending on the state you're in. If you're in Texas, Friday is going to be number one. College will be number two. And then the Texans, uh, you, you'll bring them in on all Sunday. So. Are they saying this in Big D? Charles, Charles, you think they're saying the same thing in Dallas, man? Come on. Yeah, you know what? If you're a Cowboy, if you're a Cowboy fan, you probably go NFL one, Friday night light, Friday night lights two, and then collegiate atmosphere somewhere at three. If you're in Mississippi, college Saturday is definitely gonna be number one. Uh, and if you're in Louisiana, ooh, the Saints probably would be number one with regards to uh, you know, NFL passions and things of that nature. Alabama, give me college Saturdays. If you're in Florida, that's a tough one. Give me Florida. college Saturdays. <laughs> yeah, give me college Saturdays. <laughs> well, well, here's the good thing. No matter how you rank the day, uh, you will get a taste of everything in the SWAC this weekend. A game on Friday. Uh, we got a nice late on Saturday and then a game on Sunday uh, there in uh, Texas Southern uh, and Alcorn State. So, it's going to be a lot of fun this weekend, so uh, make sure you enjoy it. Uh, Charles, don't work too hard, man, and uh, maybe next week uh, that spaghetti won't be quite as jumbled. Uh, but, you know, if it comes down to four teams, <laughs> I'm here for it, man. I, I love it when I'm everybody, here for it, Tom. <laughs> I love it when everybody has a dog in the race uh, this late yes. in the year. Yes, indeed. I'm here for it. Looking forward to it all the way through to the Bayou Classic for the Swag regular season. All right, he's Charles Bishop in Houston. He'll have SWAC action in town on Sunday. All right, let's go rewind a little bit to this past weekend as we name our SWAC players of the week. Alcorn State nearly sweeping the awards this week. Aaron Allen, Keenan Leachman, and Noah Kiani, and Bethune-Cookman's Tink Boyd, our SWAC football players of the week. On offense, it was Allen, 19 of 30 for 263 yards, three touchdowns, in Alcorn State's 44-21 win over Southern, he completed 66.2 of his pass attempts. Defensively, Leachman registered three tackles along with two interceptions, highlighted by a 95-yard interception return for a score during that big win Alcorn had over Southern. Keani, he was 3-of-3 three three on his field goal attempts and 5-of-5 five five on extra points. Again, Alcorn State with the win. Newcomer of the week, Boyd, led all Bethune-Cookman receivers as the Wildcats defeated Mississippi Valley State. He caught four passes for 76 yards and a pair of touchdowns. All right, everybody, that's it for this week's edition of Pepsi Swag Game Day. We are into week number 11 here, and it is getting good. It is getting good. There's a lot of tension. There's a lot on the line this weekend. We'll talk about it next week on Pepsi Swag Game Day. We will enjoy it this weekend. Be safe out there. For Charles Bishop, I'm Tolly Carr. We'll see you later.